On this episode of Tested Muscle, we're back in Hickory Corners, Michigan at the Gilmore Auto Museum with a 1969 Chevrolet Camaro that's been in possession of the same owner for the last 53 years. What I'm driving right now is an icon. It is the quintessential American muscle car. It is a legend among legends when it comes to American iron. This is a first generation Chevrolet Camaro. This particular one is a 1969 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. And I have to say, it's one of the coolest cars we've driven this season on tested muscle. Tested Muscle is brought to you by American Collectors Insurance. Remember, American Collectors Insurance has been protecting our hobby for over 40 years and is the number one rated collectors insurance company with five-star reviews nationwide. So head on over to AmericanCollectors.com to get a policy that's right for you. The first generation Chevrolet Camaro came out in 1967 and straight up, it was an answer to Ford's Mustang. The Mustang came out in 64, and everybody was like, oh my God, it's great, it's a little pony car. And Chevrolet just kind of said, wait a minute, we're gonna one-up you. Now, when the car debuted in 1967, everybody basically said, well, what the hell is a Camaro? Nobody knows what the word means. And some ingenious person at Chevrolet said, well, a Camaro is a little ferocious animal that eats Mustangs. Did they make that up? Of course they did. That's what marketing is, folks. You make up stuff to make it sound good. That's how the Camaro name was born. Through the years, the Camaro did go through some different iterations, especially the first gen. So in 1967, it somewhat looked like this, right? The body was similar, but the 67 had little quarter glasses. In 1968, Chevrolet did away with the quarter glasses and made a big window like this. Then in 1969, they changed the body lines. Right, 67 and 68 had beautiful rounded fenders, but all of a sudden in 69, the Camaro got a little faster in the looks department. What happened was they added these beautiful speed lines down the side of the car, and it made the car look like it was moving when it was just standing still. It made it look like it was speeding when it was standing still. And it just, in my opinion, the 69 is probably the nicest version out there of the Camaro, just because of the way that, I don't know, the lines flow. I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful looking car. This particular car is a 69Z28, and it belongs to a man by the name of Monty Kazire. My name is Monty Kazire, and I'm sitting in front of my 1969 Camaro Z28. I've owned the car since the spring of 1970. Uh, at that time, I was driving a 1965 Chevelle. A friend of mine had bought a Z28 new, and I really liked the car. I was cruising in Omaha and uh, came across a gas station with this car sitting out front with a four sale sign sitting in, in it. And I stopped and talked to the fella and uh, he wanted something larger in a car and was interested in my Chevelle and I was interested in his Camaro and we made a deal and he got the Chevelle and I got the Camaro. He bought the car from the original owner when the car had 7,000 miles on it. The car now has 59,542.567. It's got not that many miles on it, right? Um, you know, he's, he's managed to hang on to this car for years because he just absolutely fell in love with it. But here's the thing. The Z28 is a whole different ball game of Camaro than its predecessors, right? Yes, the Z28 package did come out in 1967, but what's even cooler is how well this car handles and what a departure it was from every other muscle car out there. You see, muscle cars traditionally have a formula, right? Mid-sized car, mid-sized coupe, big honking engine on front, tire smoker out the back. It's a pretty simple formula and every American manufacturer jumped on that bandwagon and made their own version of it. Chevrolet did something a little bit different. Chevrolet said, you know what? We also want to go around corners. There's a thought. Let's pick something that looks good, that's relatively quick, and that also turns and stops. Well, the answer was this car right here, the Z28. 
Summing up the Z28 performance package is pretty simple actually. They wanted the car to go around corners, they wanted it to handle better, they wanted it to stop better. You could get front or four wheel disc brakes. This is a front disc rear drum car. Um, it's got an M21 Muncie transmission. It's got a 12 volt out back with 373 gears and under the hood is a 302 cubic inch V8 that makes 290 horsepower and 290 pound feet of torque. Now, a lot of people are gonna go, well, Mike, that's really not a lot of power. But it's not the amount of power, it's how it delivers the power. Now, a lot of cars back in the day, when you think muscle car, you think big honking big block, you think 396, you think 440, 426 Hemi, etc. right? That's not the case here. This is a little V8, 4.9 liters. But the difference between a little 302 if you drop a gear, this sucker revs to the moon. And it's, it's fantastic. Unlike a big block that is kind of a, a big, lumpy, lethargic thing, this thing, I mean, I'm sorry, but this thing kicks ass. Now, the cool part about this car is that Chevy really knew what they were doing in the handling department, okay? One of the reasons that Chevrolet put the 302 under the hood was to satisfy the homologation rules for Trans Am racing. You know, you couldn't run anything that was larger than five liters and the 302 is a 4.9 liter. But here's the thing, the motor is light. And when the motor's light, well, the front end is light. Think of it like this. Everybody talks about the Shelby Cobra, the big block 427 Cobras, those ratty bastards that run around the streets. But you know what the really good one is? The small one. It's the slab side with the 289 because you've got a couple of hundred pounds off that front end. And believe it or not, it turns a big kind of hulking thing into a small nimble thing. And when you're going around corners, that's exactly what you want. So there are those out there that, that say, you know, the 302 was probably more than 290 horsepower and, and made more torque than as advertised. I have to be honest with you, I think that 290, 290 is pretty on par. I think it's pretty right. Like, you know, you drop a gear and you hit it, right? Like it revs to the moon, but I'm not getting totally thrown back in the seat. So I think those numbers are accurate, right? I'd probably bump torque by about 40 pound feet but horsepower rise, it's right around that 290-300 mark, in my personal opinion. Now, the transmission is great. I mean, the throws are really, really tight, right? You have this beautiful Hurst shifter that's from the factory with this beautiful chrome knob in here. Again, factory. The whole concept of making a road racer for the street was a relatively new thing. And when Chevrolet did this, people really didn't know what to make of it. Now, those that did know understood that by getting a car like this, you could come into a corner like we're doing now, you could throw the car in, and the car just handled. Now, Monty did a couple of tiny things to this thing. We'll call it some day two modifications. He added a larger sway bar up front, a larger one in the back, and the tires are not the old polyglass, right? He upgraded them with a 245 series BFG radial, which is, which is totally fine, right? That's kind of the standard muscle car tire. As far as the brakes go, front disc, rear drum, if I hit them, they work pretty good, okay? Now, there were very, very few of these cars that were optioned out with four-wheel disc. If you find one, that's an unbelievably rare Z28 Camaro. Another thing that's interesting about this car is that size-wise, it's really not big. It's, it's not a big car. You know, I guarantee you, if you put this next to a brand new Porsche 911, I feel like the 911 is gonna be bigger than the Z28. The other thing is the interior room is somewhat compact, right? I'm 6'4", 245, and I'm in about the max limit here. Now, I, I have enough headroom if I wanted to put a helmet on, but I have this big steering wheel, and my arms and my legs are a little on the cramp side. People who are shorter than me, no problem. Big dudes like me, a little tight. One thing that really surprised me, aside from the free revving 302, is really how light and nimble the car feels. With the Z28 package, you, you got a, a quick ratio steering box. So it's not like an old Mopar where you're, you're turning a quarter of a turn and nothing happens, right? It's just like suggestionary. This car, little inputs do make a difference. And you can see that when you throw the car into a corner. It does feel nimble. It does feel light on its feet. Um, it is, it's, it, this must have been such a shocker, such an eye opener for anybody who bought the car back then. Because honestly, it wasn't like anything America had ever seen before. Let's talk about styling. 
as we said, for 69, they put the speed lines on the sides of the car and in the body lines, and they, and they really do look fantastic. The other thing is the cowl hood. Now, you could have gotten a Z28 with a flat hood. This one has the cowl hood up front. Now, what does the cowl hood do? Well, it bumps it by two inches, the, hood, the deck height of the hood. Air comes in, hot air blows out. It's really kind of nice. It makes sense when you're doing a road race car because the fact is, this thing on the track, you know, if Redline is six grand, this thing lived between four and six grand its entire life. Now, like I said, Monty's had this car since 1970. He bought it with 7,000 original miles on it. And God bless him, he's done a couple of things. One, he's managed to hang on to it. How many owners could say I've had the same car for 53 years and, and haven't really changed it that much? He kept it this way because he knew the car was so good. And the other thing, he knew it was special from General Motors. He knew Chevrolet created something that you, know, you really weren't gonna see again. Dash layout on this is really straightforward. We got a big speedometer, a big tack. I have my HVAC controls, radio, and then on the Z28, you got this beautiful console, okay? You know, I have my, you know, my battery, I have all my ancillary gauges. I've got oil, fuel, temperature, battery, and they're all down here. Now, is it great to have to just be like, hey, am I overheating? No, they could have done better with that. That should have been in the dash, in my opinion. But it does look cool, and anybody who kind of comes upon one of these old Camaros and sees the Rally Pack gauge cluster, it's pretty slick. Plus, the console is beautifully designed. You've got these beautiful seat belt holders in here that's kind of neat. You know, the good part is there are a plethora of idiot lights under the tack and under the speedometer. So if something goes wrong, a light's gonna flash and you'll know. Like most cars from the 60s, it was driver-centric. The passenger was over there. They didn't really have a say in what was going on. And that's fun. Most people really don't care about the passenger anyway. Um, as a usable car, you know, you could, you could drive this every day. There's, there's no reason Monty did. This used to be his daily driver. And there is actually a usable back seat. You could put kids back there, you could put adults back there. Well, I mean, little adults, but you could put them back there. The trunk is a decent size. You could put a decent amount of luggage. So from a usability standpoint, Chevrolet knocked it out of the park. And again, one of the most iconic muscle cars literally in the world is right here. And plus this Daytona yellow paint with these black stripes, oh, fantastic. The, the Camaro to me has become part of the family. Um, I had the Camaro before I met my wife. And we have a, a private joke amongst the two of us that if something's gotta go, if times get rough and something's gotta go, she's gotta go because I had the Camaro first. So do I have any final thoughts about this car before I give it back to Monty, which is something I really don't wanna do? I do, I mean, I always kinda do, right? Um, the car is spectacular. This car has been maintained, it drives beautifully, it shifts great. More importantly though, it's a driver. He has used this car, he has enjoyed this car, and you can tell because it literally does nothing wrong. It tracks pin straight. When you step on the brakes, it stops in a straight line. It doesn't pull to the right or left. You know, if I drop a gear and hit it, that is such music. There is no stumble in the carburation. Everything works exactly as it should, and it's such a fabulous example of a 69 Z28, right? It hasn't been monkeyed with the only hands that have been under the hood in the last 50 years have been Monty's. And it's great because it shows how much about how he cared for this car and how much he loved this car. You know, there, there are so few original cars out there, cars with this kind of pedigree. If you have the chance to ever drive one, I will tell you, do not say no, because you are missing out on one of the great motor experiences of a lifetime. Monty, Thank you so much for letting us use this car. Thank you so much for letting us bring it to the viewers here on Tested Muscle. And folks, you know, if you're looking for your own, go out there, do your due diligence, and find one. I promise you will not be disappointed. Obviously, any Camaro is a great car. Well, some of them are. But if you guys are looking for your dream car, obviously head on over to Hemmings.com. We've got 25 to 30,000 classifieds online. We've got a killer auction, and we have some wonderful make offer pages that I am sure you will enjoy. So head over to Hemmings.com, find your dream car, and uh, do a little bit of what we do. Because I gotta be honest, this job right here doesn't suck. Doesn't suck at all. So how good exactly was the Z28 Camaro back in the day? Well, it was so good that it won the Trans Am Series back in 1968 and 1969. And honestly, after driving this thing for the afternoon, 
stepping on the gas, making these noises, I can totally see why. Fucking outstanding car, man. <laughs> what a great car.